Hey, I'm so excited to start my skincare series that I've been working on, oh my gosh, diligently for so long. It's more in my head than we'll probably I will be able to reiterate, but <clears throat> there's so much information and there's so many skincare options and there's so many skin types that, oh, fuzz is always on, that it just really takes a long time. So I am doing this series in accordance to my skin type, which I wish I could do a broader spectrum, but oh my goodness, I think I'd have to write a book. <laughs> so my skin type is um, pretty dry, slightly sensitive, but not really sensitive. Um, I, I have, of course, the aging factor, so I have some fine lines and wrinkles. I have a little bit of discoloration starting little teeny spots and my pores have been expanding over the past couple of years down around here and up over here uh, what else um, I think that's pretty much it I can get your basic oily nose and chin sometimes but typically I run very dry so I have to work at putting in the oils I thought long and hard about how to start this series because there's just so much there's the terminology the the basic verbiage that goes along with skincare that is critical to understand if you want to know what you're, you know, when you're looking for something, you want to know what that is. Um, and then we go into the ingredients. Oh, there's a plethora, love that word, of ingredients that uh, most of them I stay away from. <laughs> Some people, it'll work great for you. That's, that's good. That's more power to you and to that product. Um, so anyways, the standpoint from the basis and the foundation that I'm working from here forward is using normal to dry skin with slight sensitivity and with the ingredients that I consider to be safe, I don't know, ingredients that I consider to be safer and um, nourishing for my skin, which everything I say, please, um, you know, research it for yourself. Don't just take my word for anything. Just, um, you know, if you're concerned about anything, look it up. I try to be as accurate as I can. But I'm human. You know, I could, I could misspeak or I could misinterpret something. So I'm going to do my best for you. Please bear with me. Okay, so I figured where I would start is with some of the terminology for vitamin C. Today I am going to do a comparison of three vitamin C serums. Uh, one is by SkinCeuticals, one is by Timeless, and one is by Derma E. So I figured I would start in with explaining the different forms of vitamin C that you will see listed on packages and what they what they mean and their their pretty much their potency or their effectiveness. So uh, I'm going to show you. I okay. First off, I do not have these SkinCeuticals. I will bring that in as a reference to its formulation, its effectiveness, and why I don't use SkinCeuticals. And the two that I actually have, oh, oh there it is. The two that I actually have are um, Timeless and the Derma E. Here's my Timeless, which I have been using faithfully morning and night for weeks now. The Derma E, I just ordered and got this in, and I will explain to you how I'm going to be using these um, as I go about my vitamin C routine. Okay, and there are a couple other um, derivatives of the vitamin C. I believe it's ascorbic glut glutamate or glutonamate or glucosamate. I don't know. There's some there's few other forms that are you, you don't see very often, so I'm not. I'm focusing on these main um, four as the essentials that you will see more prominently and they are in my products that I have. So okay, first of all, L-ascorbic acid is the most effective and active form of vitamin C. It is highly potent. I wanted to get that one in there. I have all my notes right here in front of me but there's still so much and they're so jumbled up from all my research that I'm kind of picking through. So L-ascorbic acid is the, the uh, most potent form and it's the most effective form that just works immediately in your skin. Some of the other forms will need to be converted to be in order to be absorbed into the skin and ha have their effectiveness. All right, so L-ascorbic acid is the number one form of vitamin C that I prefer in my um, 
in my vitamin C serums or in my vitamin C skincare. That's the one that I want to work with the most. L-ascorbic acid is the one that is not stable. Well, it's stable for a time. It oxidizes very quickly, especially with oxi oxygen and light exposure. And you want to keep that one refrigerated too. So that's another thing to bear in mind is the L-ascorbic acid, uh, even though it's the most effective and <clears throat> the most active for your skin, it also is the one that you will be prone to having more waste if you don't work through the product as quickly as some of the others. All right, now I'm gonna try to move slow and I may repeat myself because the information is so compiled. So I also want to make sure I'm, I'm really um, presenting it in a way that everybody can understand. It's been a very long, tedious process to try to sort what I've studied and researched over years and put it into a format that is not only comprehensive, but is clear and concise because <laughs> I could talk all day. I decided, you know what, just jump in, just get it started and things will fall together. And if I miss something, I'll always do a, an interim video to cover what it is that I left out. I also would like to make the little disclaimer that I do not use filters or beauty rings or fake lighting of any sort. I don't edit my photo, my um, videos using any type of a Photoshop or anything like that. Um, I film them, I put them into my computer, I run them through iMovie and they, they get presented. So I have natural lights from the two windows that are in front of me. <clears throat> One window is on the side. Um, and my natural house lighting. I just keep the blinds, right now they're at about three quarters open because they get too bright and then, you know, everything gets washed out. So I play with the the way that the um, plantation shades uh, are open and closed. I play with that for different lighting. These fine lines and these wrinkles, they're all mine. I'm not criticizing anybody who uses those things. I just opt not to. Um, if there ever came a day when I needed to do that I will let you know but for now I I like natural lighting I don't I like the reality there's there's truth to be told in in presenting your skin your face your makeup your your way in a natural way and so I I believe in that so again I am not faulting or criticizing anybody who uses other techniques there I think they're great to look at <laughs> But I don't want to ever give a false sense to anyone. I don't want to give a false presentation to anyone about what I look like or who I am. And I, you know, I have makeup on. I have a, a light foundation, blush, highlighter, bronzer, um, lipstick, you know. So this is what my makeup really looks like in real life. If you're sitting here with me today, this is how I look. So I just want to be fair. You know, I just want to give a fair representation, especially, you know, if it's, it's important to me. I like to see what people really look like um, and I appreciate their natural states. And I've mentioned this before, we wanna be kind to our skin. We don't wanna provoke it and make it angry and frustrated and, um, and revolt basically with rashes or bumps or redness or swelling. You know, we want to we want to do these things delicately so that we are treating our skin properly as well as nourishing it and getting the benefits of it. The whole point is to improve the skin, not, you know, taunt it and <laughs> agitate it and make it worse. So, okay, so L-ascorbic acid, first and foremost. Um, another form is the sodium ascorbyl phosphate, and that is um, a very stable form of ascorbic acid. It is, it won't degrade in water or light in oxygen, so that will tend to be in skincare products that will last uh, a lot longer than, I think, maybe 18 to 24 months, as opposed to the vitamin C, which from date of processing, you have about three to five months. Once you've opened it, and it needs to be refrigerated as well, L-ascorbic acid should be kept in the refrigerator. Once you've opened it, you need to get using it. And then as soon as it starts to oxidize and discolor, you don't want to use it anymore. It has gone rancid. So sodium ascorbyl phosphate has the benefit of um, the fact that it is still um, wa it's water soluble and it still will absorb into the skin at a you know at a less effective rate than the ascorbic acid. 
well, in, yeah, that one will last a little bit longer in your serums or your creams or whatever it is that it's listed in. And you want it to be one of the highest ingredients in that product within the first three or four, I would say. I would prefer one or two. Well, obviously it wouldn't be the one, but the second or third. Um, and the uh, L-ascorbic acid, a, a healthy range is between 10 and 20% for really good results, quicker results that are really good. Okay, and then we have L-ascorbyl palmitate, which is a less potent and more stable form of um, L-ascorbic acid. And that one you'll see in a lot of different creams and stuff like that too. Actually, any of these other four you'll see, you can see around. I haven't seen the last one that I'm gonna mention quite that often. I've seen it a couple of times um, in higher end creams. Um, and I think it's probably one of the best derivatives that you could use if you're not, if you're not able to tolerate or can't use the L-ascorbic acid. Okay, so we've had sodium ascorbyl phosphate L-ascorbyl palmitate, now we're on to magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is also an extremely um, stable derivative of the L-ascorbic acid. It is light and oxygen stable, water soluble. It will be um, absorbed into your skin and converted into the active form. Some are not. So that's another thing you wanna do some research and make sure whatever form it is you're using, you want it to be converted into the active form of vitamin C, which is the L-ascorbic acid. That, that does that already, which is why I still prefer that the most. But, okay, so we also have another one. Um, this last one, oh, I have the worst time pronouncing it, so bear with me. Tetrahexeldecel. I believe that is correct. Tetrahexeldecel ascorbate. It's highly stable vitamin C ester. It's oil soluble, water insoluble. It's excellent skin penetration and cell protection against UVB. <clears throat> okay, so I had actually read somewhere, one person, I believe it was a gentleman, had said that he, he will only use that form of um, vitamin C in his skincare uh, because it, it is highly potent. It's, it's a great alternative to the original L-ascorbic acid. So if you cannot tolerate it or choose not to use L-ascorbic acid, I would look into the tetrahexidacil, <laughs> te tetrahexidacil ascorbate. So now that we're through the forms of vitamin C, um, the best formulation to use a vitamin C in your skincare is to combine it with ferulic acid and vitamin E. Ferulic acid, okay, it's an antioxidant found in some fruit seeds and rice bran and other plants. So it is a plant derivative. Um, it fights free radicals, which we will get into these terms later in the, well, maybe in the next video, probably actually. We'll go through these terms in, in, in the skincare series because truly the, the uh, terminology and definitions are critical to understanding what you're doing with your face or your skin. Okay, so they fight the free radicals, which cause the signs of aging. Um, when combined with C and E, it doubles their photoprotective ability. So protection against those harmful sun rays, even though we love the sun, it cannot be our friend all the time. So, um, and that's at um, just half a percent of ferulic acid. If, if you have a, a um, formulation of half a percent of ferulic acid, 15% vitamin C, and 1% vitamin E. It increases the efficacy, the parallel word for effectiveness, eight times. Of course, these are powerhouses individually, so if you don't have them combined in a serum, try to find them in some other form and apply them at the same time because they all work hand in hand. So you're getting, you are going to just compound your uh, benefits quickly uh, using a formulation that has all three together. This is how they work together, is as a collagen synthesis to regenerate collagen production, depigmentation, which is lessening the dark spots that we have, um, whether it's, I don't know, any, any sort of scarring or um, just natural aging spots or sun damage, um, and as the anti-inflammatory. What I have here to show you is two formulations, the Timeless and the Derma E, vitamin C concentrated serum with hyaluronic acid. 
I, as I said right in the beginning, I do not own the uh, SkinCeuticals. And the reason why I do not own these SkinCeuticals is because it simply costs too much. At about $165 for a bottle, a, a one ounce, even if it's two ounces, nonetheless, I won't. I just can't afford that. So their formulation is patented. SkinCeuticals formulation, according to their website, for a one ounce, it is a one, it is one ounce, one ounce bottle listed at $165. It is a 15% pure vitamin C, L ascorbic acid, with 1% vitamin E and half a percent of ferulic acid. And they have it patented for the pH because the super critical thing about L ascorbic acid is to to get into your skin and be affected to do what it really needs to do is to have a lower pH of um, under 3.5. So the pH for the formula to work and give it, provide its most benefits and be the most effective is at a pH level of 2.0 to 3.5. And SkinCeuticals holds its patent for not just the formulation and the percentages of the ingredients, but also for the pH between 2.5 and 3.5. They really did their work. It's a great product. It sounds wonderful and if you can afford it, go that way. I sought out an alternative and what I came up with, the best one that I found so far is by Timeless and it looks like this. It comes in a little blue sapphire bottle. Timeless is a formulation. Let me just read you the ingredients. Oh, that was the other thing. Not only can I not afford the SkinCeuticals, it has an ingredient in there that I'm personally not crazy about and personally choose not to use it, triethanolamine. So uh, that one's out for me either way, money or not, I would opt away from it. So because of that one particular ingredient. The one that I do use is by Timeless in this little box. And this is a 20% vitamin C serum. I had contacted them, um, let me read you the ingredients, water, ethoxy diglycol, L-ascorbic acid, propylene glycol, vitamin E, polysorbate 80, panthenol, ferulic acid, sodium hyaluronate, benzyl alcohol, and DHA, dehydrocetic acid. I contacted them to ask them what their pH is, and their pH falls just under the, it's nice and low and falls just under the patent that SkinCeutical hold. And, and this is the response that I got. Very, very timely response. And with a lot of enthusiasm and um, integrity and respect for their product, they really are excited about what they have discovered. So when freshly, this is according to the um, customer relations, <clears throat> when freshly manufactured, the 20% vitamin C and E ferulic acid serum pH is approximately 2.4. Our manufacturing team assured us that the process in which the pH is tested is via digital meters that have a higher accuracy than pH strips with single increment values. The correct testing for pH is in a temperature and chemical controlled environment. Our pH meters feature automatic buffer recognition, correct calibration buffers, and are always used in its designated temperature profile for these buffers. By using our pH meters in controlled settings, it improves accuracy in our pH results down to decimal points thus giving us greater confidence in our pH measurements. And then she goes on to explain that as the serum ages, the pH can change, which is the oxidation. This was all of their information and you know they, they will readily give you their information without using the meters the, that they are talking about. Um, without using these meters and guidelines such as buffers, thermal and chemical equilibrium, exact pH measurements cannot be achieved by simply using pH strips, which are known to have high inaccuracy rates. So, that was wonderful. <laughs> when I got that response, I thought, yes, okay, they know what they're doing. I have been using this one for several weeks now because I had just implemented it into my skincare routine, which I'm going to redo because I have a um, my skincare without it, and now I would like to do another video incorporating it so you can see how I use it. So, th and this is also the 20% vitamin C. I have not had a very adverse reaction to this whatsoever. I can get a little teeny bit of a slight little burning sensation because I put it up here. So I haven't really thought that it's not okay to put it up there. I don't use much up here because I don't want it to come down into my eyes. But I've had little areas that can get slightly reddened. 
barely anything. Uh, so I am tolerating the vitamin C very, very well, the actual L-ascorbic acid at the 20%, the correct pH of 2.4. For me, it works. The other one that I picked up, now this is the um, Derma E Vitamin C Concentrated Serum. I as well emailed Derma E to ask them what their percentage is, and they could not tell me what their percentage was. She said she did not have that information when it was the response through email. So I questioned that, and she said due to the um, constraints of their formulation, they generally don't give out the exact percentages. Now I love Derma E. I use several of their things, but I wasn't really happy with that answer. So I will continue to use it because it, oh, she did reassure me that it's at the highest level for effectiveness and um, well-being for your skin that they can use. So she assured me in her own way, without the ex precise um, percentage, that it is a quality product. So I was okay with that. I wasn't thrilled with the answer and the non-transparency. <laughs> but, you know, she did let me know in, in her own way, for whatever legal reasons um, that they have, that the formulation was still going to be effective and potent. This is not an L-ascorbic serum. This is a, uh, where, let me read you. Let me read to you the ingredients. Purified water, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, vitamin C, stay C50. It's a registered trademark ingredient. Glycerin, sodium hyaluronate, organic, well, green tea leaf extract, propanidiol, propanidiol, um, which is vegetable derived. I have looked that up before. Microcrystalline cellulose, which is plant derived, cellulose gum, plant derived, alpha glucan, which is plant derived. Uh, several other little fruit and rosehip and things like that. And then we get into the illantuin, panthenol, which is vitamin B, um, vitamin E, and then a couple um, preservatives that are not bad. They're, you know, your basic xanthan gum, sodium citrate, phenoxyethanol, natural fragrance and oils. I don't always like the terminology of natural fragrance oils either because that can kind of be an umbrella for who knows what. But if you have used the brand, you like the brand, and you know it's safe for you, then... You know, I let that slide. Okay, so here, this comes in a pump. Oh, I forgot to show you the dropper. Oh, I did show you the dropper. Okay, so the Timeless is a dropper. And that is a serum I think I mentioned that needs to be kept in the fridge. Okay, because this is made with the sodium ascorbyl phosphate, it does not have to be re refrigerated. It is extremely stable and it will not oxidize with light or um, oxygen. So this is a really nice container actually. Okay, now this is not as, it's not going to have the, uh, quite the efficacy as L-ascorbic acid, but it is a good alternative. So if you can't tolerate it, this is one to look at. I will use this during the times when either this has gone bad and I'm waiting for a new one, or even if I just feel like alternating, say, something is like going on with my skin and I've had a breakout or something and I don't want the vitamin C, the strong L-ascorbic acid, I would use this as an alternative. And because this has a shelf life of two, let me see, this expires in February, 2020. So because it has about two years shelf life, I know I will get through it and it won't be wasted. So this is a super alternative. Or, you know, if you're really, really young and you just want to start with something a little bit more mild, and you're not so worried about fine lines or wrinkles, uh, this is a great alternative, um, I think, in my opinion. I haven't actually used it yet because I am waiting. I don't want to open it. I'm just like that, even if it says it's okay. I just don't want to open it until I'm ready to use it. And I still have a ways to go with my um, L-ascorbic acid before it runs out. I actually placed another order to get another one going for when this one, because it's already beginning to turn a teeny bit yellow, so not gonna be using it too much longer maybe just another week or two. And they strongly advise that if it's discoloring, um, I believe they say if it starts to turn an orangey or reddish, brownish hue, stop. And don't, don't put it to your face if it has turned into those colors. This is still basically clear with a slight hint of, of yellow. So um, I know it's still okay for a little while. But I don't play around. So I don't want to be putting anything bad on. So that'll be gone, you know, relatively quickly. So anyways, I bought this in the serum form as well as in the intensive night cream. And again, um, it has the same, pretty much the same ingredients. The, this one has a little bit 
it's a few more things in it and the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is the third ingredient as opposed to the second ingredient as it is in here so you know even though they didn't give me the direct response of the percentages i can tell that it's it's a high one you know it's it's of quality so i was okay with that there are several other brands out there um there's tree of life uh, there's Eva's Naturals. I actually have some things coming from them, but I'll be discussing those in another video. But there's other, you know, organic or, you know, I don't want to say safer ingredients that I personally prefer more. There are some other brands out there for one reason or another. It could be one ingredient. It could be the percentages. It may lack the ferulic acid. For one reason or another, I dis just dismissed them. It's not to say that they aren't quality or that they couldn't work for you. They're probably great. The one I found for me was this one. This one is the best alternative to the SkinCeuticals um, using the same idea and the same um, type of potency with the original L-ascorbic acid. So, whew, I feel like I just, you know, my balloon is just poof, deflated. So much information that I want to give to you and I want to give it accurately. I think I got through it all. I don't think that, oh, I forgot to mention that the vitamin E is an antioxidant. That was, a, I don't think I mentioned that, but I was going to give you the description of each of the three key ingredients, the L-ascorbic acid, the ferulic acid, and the vitamin E. Um, I know I discussed how they work hand in hand and they are great, um, you know, for all kinds of purposes with your skin. But again, uh, vitamin E is a very powerful antioxidant. So, okay, ah, I can take a breath. I think I made it through. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I presented things fairly and accurately. Um, again, these are my personal preferences and I am extending them to you for you to review and consider <clears throat> by all means. If they don't seem to suit you or your skin type or your ingredient preferences, there's other choices, you know, there's, there's so much out there. Just be aware and just be alert to the fact that you, you know, you're, if you're going to be paying the money, and again, I don't have a problem with paying fairly decent money <clears throat> for quality items. Oh, I should run, okay, I, I did say about the SkinCeuticals being 165 for an ounce. This was, I believe, $25, somewhere around there. I can't remember, it's two ounces. And the timeless is $25 and that is a one ounce. So uh, price-wise, these two are very comparable. This of course beats it out because it is the L-ascorbic acid, it has ferulic acid. Um, it's just the top-notch product. This is a good coming in second for whatever times that I might need it. But you know, I really drive home the point is you want the best formulation with as little other garbage thrown in there. Okay. <sighs> think, oh, there's a little spider ready to come down. Hmm. Good thing I'm done. Have a great day. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. I hope that it gave you some, you know, food for thought with the vitamin C thing. Um, and let me know if any of these products have worked out for you or if you've discovered another brilliant one. All right. I will see you guys next time. And please remember to subscribe and, you know, give that thumbs up thingy. <laughs> That thing is so funny to me, but I appreciate them. I appreciate your kind comments, your kind thoughts. I appreciate every thumbs up that I get, and I appreciate every subscriber and every share that I get too. So have a great day, and I will see you guys next time.